Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in the Indiana team bringing you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. The city of Beach Grove is really a small town on the outskirts of a big city. It, there are no cornfields to look at. It is in fact surrounded by the city of Indianapolis. All that is true and in fact it's just a quick 11 minute drive downtown to uh, catch an Indianapolis Colts NFL game or a Pacers game or to uh, hear a concert. The city of Beach Grove was founded in 1906 and grew rapidly as a railroad yard. A number of different railroads over the years uh, had their uh, repair yards here and even today Amtrak as you can see has a 108 acre facility uh, here in Beach Grove. There is in fact 16 acres under roof. Okay, the city of Beach Grove today has 15,000 residents. And I have a trivia question for you. Uh, who is its most famous past resident? That would be the iconic film star, Steve McQueen of uh, Bullet and The Great Escape fame. I've got another trivia question for you here today. How do the people of Beach Grove refer to their neighbors? That would be Grovers, as in, are you a Grover or do you live in the Grove? You know, a week or so back, I was at a wedding reception and there was a lot of people there from the Grove. And my wife made the comment, it was uh, kind of crazy how many of the people knew each other from high school and even, in fact, how many had married classmates. Okay, on to more important things. The city of Beach Grove is located at the southeast corner of uh, Marion County, which is basically 99% the city of Indianapolis. I-465, which is the Beltway, runs through it, and that'll take you anywhere inside the metro area. I-65 and I-74 are just on the very outskirts of the city of Beach Grove, and uh, I-70 and uh, I-69 are maybe 15 minutes away. So this is a very convenient location and you can get basically anywhere in central Indiana from here. Okay, let's talk about some things that are of interest to people when they're looking at making a move. One is healthcare. The city used to have uh, St. Francis Hospital. It's since uh, in the last couple decades relocated to a suburban location, oh, maybe 10 minutes away. And uh, Community South Hospital is about the same distance, 10, 15 minutes. This used to be a spotless area for uh, when it came to crime. Today, it's not quite that. Uh, it's safer than uh, living in most of the city of Indianapolis, but uh, it's not what it used to be. When it comes to uh, Parks and Rec, there's uh, four city parks and a slate of activities that run year round. These include uh, All American Day, which is July 3rd, where uh, the city park is uh, home to a big fireworks display. You've got uh, a summer concert series in the park on Thursdays. And then uh, in the fall, oh, I think it was about two weeks ago, there was the fall festival parade. And come Christmas time, there's a Christmas with lights uh, parade. The school system is rated uh, B minus by niche.com. It has two elementary schools, an intermediate middle school and the high school, which has 900 students, which uh, has some appeal to folks because you can find a smaller school where there are uh, more individualized attention. The school has done pretty well in sports over the years. They won a basketball title, girls basketball title about 20 years ago when uh, Katie Gerald's uh, stood at the line in the regional finals with less than a second on the clock and nailed two free throws to take them on to state and to win that title. She went on to uh, be named uh, the state's Miss Basketball, played in college and then in the pros and is now the coach at Purdue. The boys won just uh, two years ago and uh, oh, the uh, wrestling team for years dominated the uh, Marion County scene. The main street here um, has seen substantial revitalization in the last couple of decades. It's now dotted with small shops, restaurants, and pubs. And uh, there's quite a few, few people here that uh, frequent it. You'll see the Grovers here. For more options uh, when it comes to shopping or dining, within uh, 20 minutes, you can go to the Southport uh, Road area or to Greenwood uh, with its mall. You can go up to Trendy uh, Fountain Square or hey, like I said, you're only 11 minute Uber drive to uh, the Circle in downtown Indy with all its uh, restaurants and festivities. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna wanna pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Okay, let's talk real estate. There were 178 homes sold in the city of Beach Grove during the last 12 months. They ranged in price all the way from $47,500 to $415,000. And the median price, right smack on the nose at $200,000 even. 
Okay, we're about uh, five blocks south of Main Street right now. I'm standing in front of 534 Fletcher uh, Lane in Beach Grove. This is a 3-1 uh, ranch style home that's uh, had pretty major rehab to it in the last uh, oh six months or so. It's got new flooring, new light fixtures, new kitchen cabinets, new countertops, just a whole lot of it is new and then upgraded. And the ticket on this one is uh, right at 199. So you get to see what the average priced home in the city of Beach Grove looks like, what you get for your money. Now, if you have a home to sell in order to buy your next home, you'll want to check out this next section, which is guaranteed to make you money. And hey, if you don't have a home to sell, then feel free to skip ahead if you'd like to the next home on our tour. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're going to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm going to arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, people are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job, is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you're gonna to wanna to be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color. Flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around, they're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door, knock down the spider webs, power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't want to do it, I know a guy. Number four, once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey, so the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage. You can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying and it's God awful true. Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. And the guy just refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll want to choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not want to look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You wanna motivate them. It's not about you, it's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. So you may wanna consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, 
it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years, but a buyer coming in, those are like trigger points for them is to say, well, maybe the house hasn't been taken care of, or it just doesn't give you that first impression. You may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures. Hey, it all depends. And when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house, you're gonna wanna remember this because yes, it's a pain in the donkey, but kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna to wanna to walk through your house and you're gonna to wanna to thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things, and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chest of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor that doesn't help create a good feeling. So, hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. That's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. They're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. Every house has a list and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. And you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, if somebody writing an offer Hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't want to hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, Take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't want to paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way 
at getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned. And yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck which was just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat. I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's going to want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. He couldn't get hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what. I've got an open house tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And I will be here at 8 o'clock. And, and if you want to get a look before everybody else does, be here at eight o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to eight and the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take him through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. Hey, I just moved around the corner. We're in the uh, Timber Grove neighborhood at 1024 Timber Grove Place. We're jumping up to the top of the price range with this uh, two-story corner lot here. It's got 3,871 square feet. It's a two-story over a partial basement. It sports four bedrooms plus two full and two half baths. It's got a great room with vaulted ceiling and a fireplace, an updated kitchen, and a remodeled master bedroom with an ensuite. Add a screened-in porch to enjoy the pretty backyard. This one was built in 1990, and it sold for $415,000. As you can see, your money goes a little further here in the Grove. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. Today, I've got the monthly market report for the month of September, 2024. In drum roll. Hey, housing inventory continues to increase across central Indiana. It is up 11% year over year, and that is a good thing. Leading the charge is Hamilton County, 
falling right in line at that 11% increased mark. Inventories have grown, now get this, even though closings are up 3%. So that means inventory is increasing faster than closings. That means more people are putting their houses on the market for sale, but that activity is slowing just a bit. Half of the homes are now selling in 18 days, whereas a year ago, that number was 12 days. Hey, and you probably wanna know, what have prices been doing? Well, prices have been stable across central Indiana. The median price is now holding stable from a year ago at 300,000. Hey, and maybe you wanna know, can you get a big discount off a of price? Well, hey, discounts are going right now about one to 2% off the list price on average, which means that the typical house selling for 300,000 was probably listed right around 305,000. Inventory has grown over 11% over the past year. So how many houses are on the market? Drum roll. Hey, there's now 5,027 single family homes on the market for sale. And with mortgage rates now back down into the sixes, it just might be a good time to take a look at what homes are available. Hey, FYI, I can set you up with an intelligence search for just the type of home you're looking for. I can take into account location, schools, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, age, style, you name it. Heck, I can even sort for the size of the garage or if it's on a lake or not. I can sort for a whole host of factors that are important just to you. Let me know if that interests you. I can help you find and secure the house that's just right for you. And there's no cost or obligation, so text or call me. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.